Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I'm an IFBB Pro female bodybuilder. And on this channel, we talk about steroids, bodybuilding, and all the things. So if you like that kind of content, stick around. I guess that my last video ruffled some feathers. So I'm here today to apologize and go back to my corner. I'm just kidding. I'm going to call it out directly. But before I do that, I just want to make something clear that I do not have issue with the athletes specifically in these videos. It's the big influencers that are, in my opinion, glossing over nuance and confusing people on purpose. There are fitness creators out there who want you to believe that blood work alone can prove whether or not somebody is natural. And I am here to tell you that is not the case. Standard testosterone blood tests will not show total androgenic activity. They only detect testosterone, not full anabolic activity from DHT or 19 nor compounds. And let's be real, big influencers know that testosterone levels alone, standard testosterone levels alone, cannot prove anything. Blood work can only show if you're currently using testosterone, and even then, only at superphysiological levels will it flag abnormal. Look, I may not have a PhD or a million followers, but I've been in this industry for a long time. I've known pros who blast PEDs all year round, then get off for a few months, go get their labs done, and their testosterone comes back normal or even low normal. Myself included in that, I showed you guys my labs on my last video. Now I'm going to use this video as an example of how some big creators can manipulate the narrative and mislead people. The internet thinks both of these influencers are lying about being natural. And I'm not a fan of fake natties, so I came up with a plan. I invited them to fly out to film a workout together, but at the last minute, said I'd like to blood test them with only 48 hours notice. I have a medical- Now I'm going to pause here and say there's no way for us to know whether or not he actually did not give these guys a heads up. And again, this is not about the athletes themselves. I'm not trying to say that they're natty or not natty. That's I'm not guessing that here. I'm just calling out the influencers like Jeff Nippard that are not going over the nuance intentionally, in my opinion here. Doctor, measure their testosterone levels, compare them to mine, and see whether or not they fall within the natural range. Let's start with Hussein. Everyone thinks he's on steroids because of this transformation, which took him just three years to achieve. Definitely suspicious, so let's see. Most natural lifters fall somewhere between 200 and 850 nanograms per deciliter. I'm at 470 right now. Guys who enhance will often go well above 5,000. Hussein. That's true. A lot of guys, um, a lot of pro bodybuilders, will blast test and, and get up into the thousand, the levels that he's talking about. That's not uncommon. But again, that doesn't mean that their levels indefinitely stay in these ranges and that like they're not coming off their natural testosterone isn't bottoming out. Came in at 689. Julian is a whole other animal though, especially at just 19. And going into the blood test, I was honestly very skeptical about his natty status. His testosterone came back at 672 and all their other hormones were normal too. It's always possible. So he posted that all their other hormones are normal too. He only posted the luteinizing hormone, which does not show us anything really. Why not show their, if he did all of their hormones, why not show their estrogen levels? Why not show their kidney values? Why not show their IGF-1 levels? So that's to me. Now, if there's a longer video on this that I have not seen, somebody correct me. To me, this is a very misleading video. And that, again, is my opinion. Well, someone used in the past, but... Julian wants to be Mr. Olympia one day, so if he really is natty now, we might look back on his physique and think, maybe he just was one in a billion. Okay, the internet... And I'm not taking that away from him. Maybe he is one in a billion. Who knows? But I am saying that Jeff... This is not an accurate way to tell if somebody is natty or not. Now, again, I can't say whether or not these guys are natties. Either way, their physiques are incredibly impressive. Standard blood testosterone tests do not prove natty or not. Now, we're not talking about WABDA here. We're talking about standard blood testosterone tests. And I believe that is what he had in the video. He had a doctor come in. Now, it might sound smart. It might sound scientific, but it's completely misleading. And here is why. The timing of when you get your blood work done changes everything. Someone can be on blast six months ago, 
recover, test clean, have normal testosterone levels, and still have residual muscle, residual strength, even visual fullness from their previous use. I mean, again, I'll reference myself and the video that I made last. Using standard testosterone blood work as proof of being natty is like using a single screenshot to explain an entire movie. It tells you nothing about the full story. And here's what a lot of influencers are not telling you. Every anabolic steroid, whether it's injectable or oral, is suppressive of natural testosterone. Let me say that again. Every anabolic steroid, whether it's injectable or oral, is suppressive of natural testosterone. To understand this, you need to know the difference between endogenous and exogenous testosterone. Endogenous means that your body makes it naturally. Exogenous means that it's coming from something else like medication or injectables as we know it. And here's the thing, standard testosterone panels cannot tell the difference. We're not talking about WABDA here. Standard testosterone panels cannot tell the difference between endogenous and exogenous testosterone. It only measures what's in your bloodstream and not where it came from. And remember how I said all steroids suppress natural testosterone? Well, that's why most, if not all serious bodybuilders use testosterone as a base. Because if they're running compounds like Anivar, Primo, Mastron, Deca, their natural testosterone would crash. And you know what that looks like? Low testosterone. Testosterone plays an important role in muscle gain, but it's not the full story. It's not just testosterone. It's the combination of androgenic activity and IGF-1 signaling that drive growth. And standard testosterone blood tests will not show androgen load. Think of it like this. The more androgens you have circulating in your bloodstream, the more muscle your body can sustain. Someone could take minimal or no testosterone, load up on hundreds, even thousands of milligrams of other compounds, and still look massive with low or normal testosterone. And then there's IGF-1, a key factor in muscle growth. When you take HGH, what you're really doing is elevating IGF-1 which drives muscle growth. So technically, somebody could take no testosterone, claim to be natural, run HGH, and still build more muscle and recover faster than they would not truly naturally. And guess what? That doesn't show up on a testosterone test either. But what's more likely happening when we see influencers especially showing proof of being natural by showing their blood testosterone results is that they have either came off of super physiological levels of testosterone or they're taking compounds that are not going to show up on a testosterone panel anyway. Now, I know this is a lot of information, and honestly, we've only scratched the surface. We haven't even talked about cholesterol, kidney values, C-reactive proteins, liver panels, and all the other metrics that actually matter when it comes to assessing PED use. But hopefully this gives you enough to see how misleading some influencers can be when it comes to blood work proof, and these creators know exactly what they're doing. They're not being transparent. And in my opinion, they're protecting a narrative. And that's the real issue here. The moment someone uses blood work as proof of being natty, they've already shifted from transparency to performance, in my opinion. Because if your goal is education, you'd explain the nuance. But if your goal is influence, you'll manipulate the narrative. And that, again, in my opinion, is what it's really about, influence. A lot of these creators want to hold a moral high ground, so they weaponize science while ignoring how PEDs actually work in the real world. But those of us who have been around, we know. This industry is built on smoke and mirrors. But in all honesty, guys, you don't need to pick sides. You just need to question influencers with agendas, even when they sound smart. Because intelligence without honesty is not education. It's manipulation. And that's why Auntie Hannah is here to clean this shit up. Just kidding. At the end of the day, you guys, you decide what's important to you. And if you want to be a fitness influencer or you want to step on stage, you're going to be going up against people who are using PEDs, plain and simple. I probably ruffled even more feathers and that's okay. So there you have it, guys. Fight me in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. No, seriously, fight me in the comments. <laughs> see you in the next one.